Greetings everyone, this is Force Nature coming at you with another session of What's the Difference. In this session, we have a Battle of Namco. We're going to be taking a look at Soul Calibur and Tekken. To answer the simple question of, what's the difference? In the interest of brevity, we're going to be taking a look at the latest installments in each franchise as in Soul Calibur 6 and Tekken 7. In Soul Calibur 6, your objective is to achieve this. This is a knockdown. Once you get a knockdown in Soul Calibur 6, you will usually have advantage over your character and be able to pressure them. Unless your opponent is Zhang Wa. So yeah, when you knock down the opponents, generally you're advantage and then you can pressure or do whatever you want to them. And all they can do is try to be crouch block on the ground or try and do like a Yukemi tech roll or anything like that. Also, another objective you can try and do in the match is trying to hit a uh, launcher of some sort, such as like whiff punish in an opponent's move. In Tekken 7, your objective is to hit this or something like this. These are launchers. Launchers lead to a lot of damage. Especially if your combo has a lot of wall here. Launchers can be applied in match following effective movement, poking, and getting a read on your opponent. Launchers can be in the form of normal hit, or counter hit. The general flow of combat in Soul Cover 6 revolves around the 8-way run system, so it can mean simply pressing like forward, back, up, or down, so basically like 8, 6, 2, 4. So basically just a single tap in any direction and then you can you actually cover quite a bit of uh, distance with your movement. There's also um, side walking if you were to hold it down and even if you press like up back or down back you can move uh, you can move like diagonally. Also in Soul Cover 6 there's a movement called Step G where if you press the, the guard button during movement you can actually kind of cancel your movement slightly early and step right into a guard so it is a, hand, a handy kind of like movement or somewhat defensive offensive um, maneuver. The general flow of combat can also entail um, placing the relatively safe move on the opponent's block and then punishing their retaliation. You can also put firm advantage or brick attacks on your opponent's block which end up also running up the guard gauge a lot, weakening the opponent's guard stamina and as you see right now it's flashing red so when it's flashing red that means another strong attack will likely break it if the opponent ends up blocking too much. And of course, whiff punishment is a big part of Soul Calibur. In Tekken 7, Movement is very crucial to the experience. So before you can start to land your fancy pants launchers and like for instance like start swagging on your opponent or whatever, uh, you have to basically learn how to move. Alright, in a general sense in Tekken, you can do um, you can tap forward forward, you do a forward dash, you can tap back back, you do a back dash. Alright, I'll let you know right now that back dashes are not good in general. However, there is one kind of saving grace for a back dash, is that you do block basically kind of automatically after a back dash, so that makes it so that makes it a little safer than kind of the backdash and other 3D fighters. So, I mean, that is a saving grace, but it doesn't really cover much distance. Of course, you can also side step pressing like up, up, or down, down. And if you hold uh, either up, up, or down after a side step, then you'll go into a sidewalk, which is usually very evasive against like general kind of like linear moves. So you have your, your sidewalk. But yeah, in, in Tekken, I, I mean, Aside from the fact that it auto blocks, in general, back da normal backdashes are not good. So what I'm going to have to highly recommend is using what's called a um, Korean backdash canceling. So the method I use is just simply the uh, the back back down, back back down, back back down, back back down. I know there's a more kind of a um, technical way way to do it. I use kind of like a bootleg kind of way to do it. Like I'll show you. I can't input. It, uh, I can't uh, input it properly, but I can show you what the input looks like. Some characters also have a special crouch dash referred to as a wave dash. It is usually input with forward then quarter circle forward. It can also be used to buffer some moves such as for instance while rang's um, skyrocket right there. You can also use it to uh, buffer while rising moves like while rising like 4-4 four, four, for instance. So it's for, for characters that usually have this, uh, wave, this wave dash stance it is usually fairly fairly integral to their gameplay and it lets you know that Mishimas are generally based around effective wave dash. And of course, whiff punishment is a big part of tech. Environmental damage in Soul Calibur 6 is in the form of wall combos. Wall combos can be incredibly dangerous. And Soul Calibur 6 has ring outs, your go-to 100% combo. Environmental damage in Tekken 7 can come in the form of walls, wall breaks, balcony breaks, and floor breaks. 
In Soul Cover 6, throw breaks are performed by pushing any button when the opponent tries to throw you to break a forward throw. And any button press plus back to break a back throw, formerly a B throw. In Tekken 7, there are three primary types of throws. There's left side throw, inputted with 1 plus 3. There's right side throws, inputted with 2 plus 4. And then there are command throws, which can be inputted with um, usually their own special inputs, such as like down forward 1 plus 2. Alright, the special thing about throws in Tekken 7 is that you can actually see which arm comes out. For instance, with the left side throw, you see the left arm. With the right side throw, you see the right arm. And with a command throw, you see the character put out both arms. Alright, uh, one throws or two throws are also known as left throws, right throws. Can be broken with one plus with one or two, no problem. Whereas command throws can only be broken with one plus two. So basically what that ends up doing is creating a 50-50 between doing like either left side or right, th right side throw or a command throw. During Okazemi and Soul Calibur 6, you don't have to worry about wicked kicks or anything, so you can basically just pressure the opponent on the ground for free. So I usually recommend using a move that is basically advantage and block and can do like good guard gauge damage for example. Yeah, so basically all the opponent can do after they get knocked down is either like block, like crouch block or stand and block depending on the, on the follow up. And, or they can end up like performing a Yukemi tech roll. So, although if you do get a hard knockdown, it makes it your fault would be pretty much guaranteed. In Tekken 7, there are numerous ways to be able to respond after getting knocked down. For instance, the first thing is that you can just simply lighter. But I'll just let you know that in Tekken 7, there is a lot of different type, different types of, let's say, recovery options and I'm not going to go over all of them because it's just too extensive, but I'll just go over a few of them right now. For instance, you can spring up on the spot, you can tech roll to the side, you can tech roll back, you can stand up on the spot, you can front roll, you can roll to the side by pressing 1 plus 2, you can perform a mid wake up kick, you can perform low wake up kicks that can also start combos on counter hit, you can perform a small recovery kick then roll backwards, you can perform a forward spring attack that's usually inputted with like forward or forward forward 1 plus 2. You get the idea, there's a lot of options you can do. So basically for the attacker, after you get a knockdown, generally what you do is do a 50-50 between either like a strong low or a strong mid. As you see, if you get the opponent in the corner, this can become particularly dangerous for them. In Soul Calibur 6, you block by simply pressing the guard button. In Tekken 7, you block by simply pressing nothing. Although you can also block by pressing back, and you still need to crouch in order to block lows. In Soul Calibur 6, defensive techniques can include GIs and Reversal Edge. For instance, if you were to parry something with a GI, then sometimes you gain enough advantage you'll get a guaranteed fault which can only be beaten, be beaten with what's called a Re-GI. If you were to parry something with a reversal edge, then you have to play this funky um, rock, paper, scissor minigame where you just kind of press an attack button to try and beat out whatever the whatever the, whatever the opponent does. The special defensive technique in Tekken 7 are low parries, inputted with just down four. So you just simply time it with the opponent's attack, then you get a free combo. There are also power crush moves that power that armor through the opponent's attack and deals damage. Some characters also have parries that reverses the opponent's attack. There's a special hit status in Soul Calibur 6 referred to as lethal hits, and they tend to have pretty specific requirements. For instance, let's take a look at Sungmina's Rise in Heaven. The, it says that it triggers in the next battle after knocking out an opponent with a critical edge, and it will look like so if triggered um, successfully. And of course, lethal hits can lead to pretty powerful combos. In Soul Calibur 6, you can defend against some of your opponent's air, com air combos by using what's called aerial control. So simply push in a direction, and well, any direction, you'll move in that direction. So if your opponent's doing a lot of like AAs or like BBs or anything like that, then you can kind of turn in the sky to be able to defend yourself against some rather cheap combos. You can also use air control to save yourself from ringouts. In Soul Calibur 6, there you get two bars of meter. So that basically means that you can essentially perform two supers if you so desire. So after you do one super, if you wanted to, you can technically do it again. But then, yeah, you would have no meter. However, the recommended use of meter in Soul Tower 6 is to perform a Soul Charge. As you see right here, it can be used as a get off me move. And it basically gives you some, some powered up version of moves which allow you to kind of like just like go ham on your opponent. An offensive variation to the Soul Charge you can use is called a Soul Attack, which is quarter circle forward A, pl uh, a plus B plus K. And now you enter into Soul Charge. I mean, via attack as opposed to get off the move, and you can still kind of like go ham on your opponent and like just abuse them. And another use of meter is to perform what's called a resist impact. It takes up a quarter of your total meter, so half of a bar, 
and it basically defends against all the same things as GIs, but it can also defend against unblockables and possibly break attacks, but mainly it's essentially used to protect yourself. For instance, if your guard gauge was like flashing red and it was about to be broken, then you can use this to, like, to help protect yourself against moves where a GI wouldn't be able to work. The special meteor in Tekken 7 is referred to as Rage. It, 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 uh, you get it once per round and it, it you activates once your health is quite low and it allows you to do this. This is a Rage Art. It's basically Tekken 7's equivalent to the Super. Although once you use it, you use up your Rage. While under Rage, attacks will deal approximately 10% more damage and you can also expend your Rage on what's called a Rage Drive, which has a unique command for each character which can be checked in the move list. Rage drives are usually advantage on block, whereas rage arts generally are not. Soul Calibur 6 has an excellent mission mode we've called uh, Libra of Souls. And as you see right here, it has numerous chapters, there's numerous uh, quests that you can also do. And there's also a relatively good tutorial mode that basically goes over quite a bit of what you need to know just for getting you up to speed in Soul Calibur 6. It's referred to as Drona's Dojo and it is only accessed in the Libra of Soul mode. Tekken 7 does not have a tutorial mode, but it does have a lot of training tools to help you out with your while you're training. For instance, I'm going to take a look at Punishment Train where what it does is it shows a bunch of punishable moves on the opponent characters from their move list. Then you just select training and then it, it tells you what move to use after you punish it, after you block. Tekken 7 also has a mode called My Replay and Tips, which of course lets you watch your replays. And then at certain points during the replay, it can end up like stopping like so, and then it can end up showing you basically like a recommended combo after a certain launcher, like a hop kick, for instance. There are also solid sample combos to give you an idea of what kind of um, follow ups you can do after certain launchers. And lastly, added in Season 3 is Frame Data to Tekken 7, which is a first for the Tekken franchise. So now you can have both a simple display and a detailed display. Alright, for my main character, I'll just put a simple display which will just show a base, uh, fra frame advantage based on color and a detailed display which shows the frame data normally. So for instance, when you're at frame advantage, you'll flash blue, blue and the frame data will be red. And if you end up like negative, then it will turn red and you'll see right there that the other that the opponent will end up being at advantage, for instance, which is shown in blue. Soul Cover 6's roster currently has 26 characters, including 6 DLC characters and Inferno, who is not competitively balanced and is not allowed in ranked mode. Tekken 7's roster currently has 49 characters including 13 DLC characters. Soul Calibur 6 has an excellent character creation mode called Create a Soul. Tekken 7 has an excellent customization mode also, but I would personally prefer if it had maybe slightly less t-shirts. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this new series in the comments down below. Anyways, if you liked this video, smash that like button. If you didn't like this video, just hit the like button anyway and don't forget to subscribe for more juicy fighting game content. I also would like to say that this video is endorsed by Smart Esports and Trollcoin. And also I'd like to take this moment to thank my premium top tier fighters for their continued support which I do appreciate. If you'd like to become a premium top tier fighter, click on the Patreon link down below. Anyways, this is Force Nature signing off, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on What's the Difference?